would share um, a little bit about my time abiding with the Lord from this room. This is my dining room. Um, here I have um, the table that my grandpa actually made and it used to be the table I sat at as a kid. Um, but this space for me is really sweet. It's where um, I sit with my girls in the morning, um, where we practice our memory verse, where we read and talk about the Lord. Um, there's like a lot of time I've spent here with precious friends um, or neighbors and um, I just have the opportunity to um, be with the Lord and be in his presence, but also be connecting with other people and people he loves and is pursuing. Um, and it's been, it's just really, really sweet. Um, I also was going to share, as many of y'all probably know, I'm like a total plant lady. So these are some of my plants in my dining room. And I have a tree over here. Um, but this um, space um, just has been really sweet to fill with plants. Um, I'm just personally really able to connect with the Lord through um, seeing nature and through admiring the beauty of God's creation. So for me, having plants inside my home is a sweet way where I um, almost use them as reminders of God's beauty and his creativity and his just power, his life-giving power. Um, another reason I wanted to share about my dining room is because at this table, um, I spend a lot of time um, journaling or reading the word and journaling about it or um, also working on art. Um, this is like the prime space where I'm blasting worship music or blasting my, I love instrumental music. I love classical music, but I love, um, I love like epic soundtrack scores. Um, and I like to sit in here and, um, you know, have um, pens and paper or have my newly developing skill of um, painting on the iPad. Um, and I will just, um, it's just a way where I um, seek the Lord and seek um, what is on his heart for me or for people around me. And I generally have like a running list of art I'm trying to um, create with him just to share with others or give to others. Um, and yeah, that's just, I think that's been just a really powerful thing in my life is just sitting in here and not just drawing, but um, fixing the gaze of my heart on the Lord and quieting my mind and quieting away the distractions of the busyness and the lists that are always running in the back of my mind when I'm thinking of the chores and of my kids and um, the, the next meal I'm going to cook um, or like tasks I'm doing. Um, but just, I think being in here um, and just um, intentionally quieting my mind just so that I can focus on the Lord and just so that I can meditate on his word, meditate on um, truths he's, um, his spirit is revealing to me and, um, and just intercede um, for people I love and people I'm pursuing or people that I know the Lord is pursuing. Um, so, yeah, so this is my dining room. Um, one of my favorite parts of the day, um, even how I, just the way I connect with the Lord is usually going outside and seeing what flowers are in bloom. Um, 
I'm sure some of y'all know I'm pretty obsessed with um, plants and flowers. I have some of my hydrangeas over here. Um, but I just find that when I'm in the outside and I might be taking my girls on a walk or just in my own yard, um, I think when I'm out here, the Lord just draws me um, to himself and it's really easy for the gaze of my heart to shift onto him. Um, whether it just be like an inner response in me that is um, praising him for the beauty all around me in the flowers and in the trees or um, it might be um, just me listening to the birds, you know, and marveling that um, God created each kind with its unique call that brings me and my girls so much joy um, when we're outside. So this is just a small part of my day and in truth, when it's as hot as it is today, my yard is not quite as sanctimonious to me as it is in all the other seasons. Um, but, um, I obviously still enjoy it, but I definitely um, enjoy winter more than summer, which is kind of odd, but there's just something about the bare trees and the, um, just the shade of blue that the sky is sometimes that really provokes just something in my soul that responds to the Lord. So this is one part of my day. This is my awesome backyard. Um, when we looked for a house, the Lord was just so sweet. And I think he knew what we needed more than we knew. Cause I didn't even think about the backyard until we came here. And I said, Whoa, <laughs> this is a really, um, seems like a sweet place to connect with the Lord and play with kids. I would say some of the core, um, like fundamental pieces of abiding for me are, um, being in the word of God, um, reading the word and, um, listening for the Lord and letting the Holy Spirit direct me and speak to me, um, seeking him through prayer, um, and just posturing my heart towards him all throughout the day, um, and inviting him into things, inviting his input, um, surrendering to him all throughout the day, um, and remembering him and just being aware of his presence that is with me. Um, but the one, the practice I wanted to share that's been really um, instrumental for me is um, recentering on my identity as a new creation. Um, that's been really pivotal for me in particular. Um, when I was a child and a young adult, I struggled with, um, I would call it cycles of condemnation where um, when I when I would disobey the Lord or do something that I knew was blatantly um, not what the Lord wanted, even if my heart hated what I was doing, I I um, would feel distant from the Lord and feel shame, and I would accept condemnation and wallow in shame and um, just feel like I needed to have this period of almost like self-punishment before I could enter back into the presence of God. Um, and now I think a really beautiful and powerful part of my routine is fixing my gaze on the Lord and letting my spirit respond to him and who he is and receiving from him. And I have received it from him, but being reminded of who I am, that I am a daughter 
of God now and that the blood of Jesus has covered me and it's final and complete. And what I do in my day, how my day goes, if it's a day where me and the Lord are totally in sync and just worship, I'm worshiping him and me and the girls are connecting and, you know, you know, if it's a day like that or if it's a day where we're running late and I'm sh short with my girls or they're disobeying and I'm frustrated or um, I try to cook something and it's terrible and, you know, it, it doesn't matter how my day is going to go. The truth is Jesus has paid for my sin and I'm covered by his blood and he is now entered in to the presence of God and, and sprinkled his blood on the mercy seat. And I can freely enter into the presence of God, whether I have had the perfect day or a day that to me feels um, just like a terrible day. Um, and he, the Lord is pulling that um, performance mentality out of me. Um, I've struggled with that since I was a child, um, but I think every day with him, he's for deeper and deeper ingraining in me that I do not earn his favor or his love. I have it because he's good and I am worthy of it because Jesus is worthy and he sacrificed himself to cover me. Um, so remaining in that truth um, if I have a moment where I am living out of my flesh and I am not being who I am, who is a new creation, I can immediately turn to the Father and see him, see his, his love and receive it. Um, and that is a very um, just important and powerful part of my story and of my journey in abiding, because in the past I would have wanted to hide myself from the Lord and felt shamed. Um, and I've learned to joyfully repent and to joyfully receive the covering that is already satisfactory. It's not it's not newly covered. The Lord knows every moment of weakness I will have for the rest of my life. And Jesus has covered all of it. And so I can joyfully enter into the presence of God and commune with him regardless of my own weaknesses and regardless of, um, you know, of how the day goes or doesn't go. Um, and that's just been a way I think the Lord is really teaching me about his goodness and just revealing and just continually just pulling out any roots that are left of a way I think I thought I was earning salvation. I don't think I, as a child, was aware of that. Um, but when we hide ourselves from the Lord when we've um, fallen short. That is like a dis, um, it's almost like a, it's not um, true according to the gospel. That is not um, the, tr the truest, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. True, it's not true. Um, <laughs> it's just not, the way of the Lord and it's not I guess I was almost going to say it's almost disrespectful to the cross and inauthentic to what Jesus has done and I think it's cheapening um, unintentionally but cheapening the work he's done because it's total and satisfactory um, and I am still being sanctified but Jesus has fully covered that whole process.